What if I told you you could take your circuits from looking like this to looking like this? Well, that is the beauty of circuit boards, which you will learn today. I'm doing an intro, stop. First thing we need to do is get a circuit board. Now for this first example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have it update your score when you do different things. So we're gonna have a button and you get one point when you push the button. We're gonna have a trigger volume and when you walk in the trigger volume, you get three points and we're gonna have a trigger handle and when you hit the trigger handle, you get five points. Yo, we just got new shapes. When did we get these new shapes? Is this beta? Hold on, look at this. We got we got a quarter sphere, a triangle, a pentagon. Where, when, when did, when? All right, so we have our outside things that we're gonna have affecting stuff inside the circuit board. So now let's get into the circuit board. So for that, let's just hit configure on the circuit board and give it a name. I'm just gonna call it score. Okay, now we need to make a function name. So you can have multiple functions on there and then within the functions, there's gonna be inputs and outputs. So we'll just call this one score again. Seems like it's kind of there just to organize your different functions within your circuit board. And then we add that function. There we go. Okay, so now we have the score function. Within this function, we have inputs and we have outputs. So what information do we want coming in to the circuit board? And what information do we want to come out of the circuit board? So we already know that because we want things to happen when we hit the button, when we hit the trigger zone, when we hit the trigger volume, those are all gonna be orange execution signals. So what we need is input. We're gonna create a new input and we're gonna keep it as an execution. You can change it to all of these different input types. We have player, we have vector, string, integer. You can do full list as inputs if you want. There's a whole bunch of different types of inputs. But right now, we're just gonna leave it as execution because that's what we're doing for this simple example. So execution, we will call this one the button one because that's what this one's gonna be for. And then we'll We'll hit create. So now you see we have a button input. Let's make two more. We're gonna make one for the trigger volume and one for the trigger handle. All right, so we now have our three inputs. Now, because this is keeping track of score, that means we want the circuit board to output a score. And for us, that score is just gonna be an integer. So in very much the same way, now we go down to the outputs and let's name this output score and then we will make it into an integer. And once we create it, now you can see there's a score output happening in here. Now keep in mind, you don't have to know the inputs and outputs right when you start your circuit board, often things change and you can add them in as you go or delete them as, as you need. So actually, uh, let, let's go ahead and hook up these three things over here. So all we're gonna do is hook up the press to the button and hook up the volume to the player entered, and then the primary action pressed to the handle. All right, so now it's time to add in our circuits inside the circuit board. What we're gonna do here is hit edit on the circuit board. And now we've got all the inside stuff and you can see that the button volume and handle inputs have their own sort of internal outputs here. And then we have our score output that has its internal input here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have the button give you one point, we're gonna have the volume give you three points, and the handle give you five points. So for that, we're going to use, because our output's an integer, we're gonna use an integer variable. So keep in mind that variables within the circuit board aren't remembered when you get out of the circuit board. So for instance, I have this integer variable in here. Let's say I add some score to it. If I make another integer variable outside the circuit board, this is counted as a completely different variable. So even if you update the score, it's not, it's not gonna update because it counts as two separate things. So now let's make this one add one point. Add an add, do our simple little crisscross connection, add a one, and then we're gonna hook up the button push and then we're gonna hook up this output to our score on the back. There we go, now you can see, I hooked up this one to the score outside. So now let's do the same thing, but we're just gonna add three points and five points. So we're just gonna select both of those, clone them down, select them again, clone them down. The trigger volume one, we're gonna hook up to that and we will change this number down here to a three and then the trigger handle update on this one and we will change this to a five. 
Now we don't have to hook up any of these other variables over there because they're all counted as the same thing within the circuit board. So I'm just gonna make some quick text circuits so we can actually see the score pop up. So what I have right now is I have a two string and I have a text. We also, let's let's just add in an execution output so that it updates the text every single time that we do one of these actions. So we're gonna go back into configure circuit board, add in a new output, and that new output is gonna be execution. We'll call it text update. And then we will just hook that up here so now every time one of those actions is completed, we want this execution to just go through the entire circuit board and output. So we're just gonna hook that up there, that up there, and that up there. So now it doesn't matter which one of these actions we do, a execution will pass through and update the text. So now if I hit the button, I should get one point and it should update the text. There we go, one point. If I hit the trigger volume, I should get three points, which means this should turn to a four. Boom, it's a four. And then we have our thingy, whatever this is. It should give me five, so that should be nine. Hey, look at that. All right, so that's just a simple example of what you can do with circuit boards. But now I'm gonna show you how to do something a little more complicated and kind of quicker. So to start out, we're gonna use one of my old follow gadgets, the RCL Follow V5.1. It's a free invention on the invention store. All right, so all this does is it follows the local player just has this little orange thing chasing you. All right, so they made it super easy for us to make circuit boards. All right, so all we need to do is select every single one. Boop, 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 boop. And you see a little options pop up. Create circuit board, bam. And now all the circuits are inside of here. So let's edit. And here you can see all the circuits are in here. Now with this circuit specifically, you actually don't need any outputs or inputs because again, it only follows one player. The thing that's making it go is this 30 Hertz receiver right here. So you, you kind of don't really need to have any inputs or outputs. You can just put names on it. You, you, you don't necessarily always need an input or an output. Give him a second here, give him a second here. There he is, you see that he's working. He's still following me, okay. Let's modify the circuit board a little bit so that it doesn't have to be the local player. You could change it to whatever player you'd like. So what we're gonna do is configure the circuit board. It doesn't have a function in there because there were no inputs or outputs. So let's make a function and we'll just call it player. Okay, and then for that, we just want an input. Again, we'll make it player and we'll make it into a player port. Create that. So now that that's created, let's go edit the circuit board. And you can see down there, we have a player input. So now if I wanted to, you know, just make it not the local player and give, give us options to use other players, we could do that. Now I think because that port back there says local player, I think you might be able to get away with doing this and it's still working exactly the same. But if you had some method to pick another player for it to follow, you could put it in there. Yeah, still works. If this video helped, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Use code RCL1, and I'll see you next week. RCL man out.